wait a second longer to clear out the waiting room and then we will get started. All right, welcome everybody to our Tuesday Zoom check-in meeting. Um, it's good to see all of your faces and hope you're doing well. Um, today we will be um, recording our session. There's gonna be information that we encourage you to share with um, people that you, um, that might find it interesting. So um, we will include lots of resources and um, the link to this meeting in our follow-up email. If you are not on our list or know somebody who is not, we're still um, collecting some names as um, people are interested. So feel free to send us names and emails and we will get them added so they receive links in the future. Um, today for our question and answer session, we will be focusing on questions that pertain to today's topic. So if you have any questions that are just um, general questions that aren't necessarily related to what we'll talk today, we're happy to answer them. Email our info box or somebody on staff and we will be sure to get back to you about that. Um, but for our time today, um, with what time we have at the end, we will be focusing on um, questions pertaining to today's topic, which we are very excited about. Um, just a reminder before we get started that we do have a generic worship service um, and generic meaning it will um, fit any Sunday. It's not specific to um, any particular day on the calendar. We hope that helps provide rest and Sabbath for you and your worship leaders um, so that we might, um, that you might find a time of rest and recovery in this time. So with that, we will pass it over to Bishop. Thank you, Caroline. I appreciate it. Um, good to see, good to see everyone. Uh, thank you for zooming in this afternoon. I'm always grateful to see your faces and for your presence. Um, as Caroline mentioned, we do record these Zoom meetings. Um, so if you missed our last meeting on July 21st, or if you want to relook at this um, meeting, please know that it's available for you to view on our Synod's YouTube page. Go to YouTube, type in Northwestern Ohio Synod. Um, also be sure to subscribe. I want to remind folks about um, our God-given mission here in the Northwestern Ohio Synod, sent by the crucified and risen Jesus to make disciples, equip leaders, strengthen parishes, and launch new communities for the renewal of Northwestern Ohio and the world. That's our mission statement. And this afternoon, we're going to focus on one of the key elements of that mission, and that is to equip leaders, mm -hmm. to equip leaders. <laughs> I have been doing a deep reading of um, First and Second Corinthians these past few weeks. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to open with some scripture, mm -hmm. and I'll be reading from Second Corinthians, mm -hmm. um, the fourth chapter. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read the first verse. I'm going to jump over to verses 16 through 18, then I'm going to come back to verse 1. So 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1. Therefore, since it is by God's mercy that we are engaged in this ministry, we do not lose heart. So we do not lose heart. Even though our inner nature is wasting away, our outer nature is wasting away. Our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure. Because we look not at what can be seen, but what it cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. And then returning to our opening verse, therefore, since it is by God's mercy that we are engaged in this ministry, we do not lose heart. The Serum Primer is a collection of prayers and worship resources developed in Salisbury, England during the 13th century. It's been around for a while. Serum is the abbreviation of the Latin word for 
Salisbury. And this prayer collection was used throughout Britain up until the time of the Reformation. And the particular prayer that I'm going to read is included in uh, Evangelical Lutheran Worship Prayer Book for the Armed Services. And if you've not seen this wonderful little collection of prayers and services, I um, would encourage you to get a copy of it. And if you have folks who are serving in the armed forces, um, it's a wonderful little resource that I would encourage you to, to get into their hands. This particular prayer begins, let us pray. God be in my head and in my understanding. God be in mine eyes and in my looking. God be in my mouth and in my speaking. God be in my heart and in my thinking. God be at my end and at my departing. Amen. This time I'd like to introduce um, Pastor Adam Sornshai. He serves as the pastor of St. John Lutheran Church in Cardington, Ohio. Good afternoon, Pastor Sornshai. I think you're muted, Pastor. There you go. There we go. Thank you, Bishop. I've been asked to give an overview of the Diaconia program. Um, this is a program that uh, it's a two year lay education program. Uh, that and you could go to the next slide, Caroline, that's grounded in the Great Commission and particularly the part of the Great Commission that uh, in which Christ commands to teach these disciples that we form to obey everything that our Lord has commanded us. So it, it is, like I said, it's a two year lay education program uh, taught by past local area pastors. <clears throat> One of the, if you, if you start promoting this in your, uh, to your parishioners, they're going to ask uh, for the pronunciation of diakonia uh, and more importantly, what it means. So we know that in the Greek, uh, diakonia means uh, service or ministry. And that's what we're calling people to deepen is their understanding of their call where, you know, in the priesthood of all believers, we're all called uh, to live out our ministry daily, and the vocations God called us to, and also to share those gifts in the life of the parish. Uh, this program is over 40 years old. It started in 1977 by uh, Stephen Bowman. I uh, was fortunate enough, I grew up in the Metro New York Synod. That's where I um, did my candidacy and became aware of the program. We had people in my parish that had gone through it. Um, and really contributed to the life of the parish uh, for, for, for their experiences through diaconia. He started it as a pastor and it was really a grassroots uh, program endeavor uh, to teach uh, for, for him and other pastors to teach courses locally. And now this national program is active in 11 different synods in the ELCA, including ours. So our mission with the Akinia is discipleship driven. It's we're seeking to teach, equip, and motivate uh, Christians. So, we're, so you think of the, the, this experience of having those in your congregation uh, that you know we, we, that want to go deeper in, in, their, in their faith life, in learning more theology, uh, and you take them and you take those in other congregations and other parishes that want to do the same thing, and imagine them all in a classroom uh, and with a, with a pastor or deacon that wants to work with people <laughs> that uh, want to go deeper and want to learn and want to grow. And it just creates a wonderful experience where everybody uh, is being, you know, as, as a teacher uh, in this, I'd say I've been taught, uh, I've been equipped, I've been motivated by my students. Uh, it, it's just been wonderful. It, it's very life-giving. So we are all learning and equipping and motivating one another in deepening our, our baptismal calling. Now the program consists of 12 courses over a two year period. 
you would typically take six courses uh, each academic year, and it runs from you know fall to spring. Each course is five um, five class sessions, which are three hours uh, meets three hours a week. Uh, there's assignments, there's reflections, practical ministry exercises, um, and each each class session starts with a um, a student sharing offering a devotion based on one of the saints of the church so it's this isn't just heady we're, we're, we're kind of entering into a time each each class in reflecting on ones who imitated christ and as we seek to be imitators of christ we offer uh, uh offer uh, we also offer spiritual and faith formation retreats um so there's really a lot of um growing in faith together um as a, as a diaconia uh, program and i will say that there are people that might want to just take a course and that's okay too. So people can register for one year um, or, you know, or have intent. I'm going to just do two years straight through. Uh, some people might want to just sign up and like, I want to learn. Uh, I just want to learn this. I want to know more about the new Testament and sign up and just, just take that course too. Or some people could say, you know, I, I'd like to do this, but I don't know if I could do it straight through in two years. Well, that's okay. You could chip away at it as well. So that here are the courses that are covered in Diakonia. There's a Series A and a Series B. Uh, like, as I said before, six uh, courses uh, each year. Uh, ideally taught by, you know, you have six different uh, either pastors or deacons teaching a course. Some sites uh, have fewer and they figure it out. And some sites have more and they figure it out. But that's, that's typically what, what, you, what you're looking at. A new student can come in at Series A, for example, and they start with New Testament, intro the New Testament. Um, and and some people will start one year, and they might be starting with intro to the Old Testament. So you'll you'll also have this kind of um, cohort, your own cohort, but you'll encounter people that are a year ahead of you and a year behind you. So it really also what we found it builds a, a community that we see too of people engaging and 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 living out the, their discipleship. Um, and so so this is um, again. We, these are people that are being uh, invite. We're inviting people to go deeper into their understanding um, of our faith, and they're able to then, in, in various ways, share this in the life of their congregation and and uh, in the parish. You know, some people start prayer ministries. Some people uh, do Bible studies, and, and you know, there's so many various ways that they end up sharing their gifts, and it's just it just keeps blessing and blessing uh, others. Uh, in the life of the congregation. And with that, I think Pastor Sarah is going to introduce us uh, to some folks who have experienced or are currently experiencing uh, the Diaconia program. All right. We have, um, We've been blessed with wonderful students uh, in the Diaconia program. One of the things that um, Jesus is known for doing is, is sending uh, folks out to, to do ministry and discipleship in pairs. And we sort of recommend the same in the Diaconia program. You benefit from having a companion to process with, someone you can debrief and ask questions with often multiple people from the same congregation um, will enroll in the program together. But our next two take that to a new level, right? Connie and Scott, um, they are married to each other and they took the Diaconia program. They went through the entire classes together. Um, um, Connie and Scott are members at St. John Lutheran Church in Cardington. They were also part of what I fondly refer to as the traveling roadshow that um, drove around the Synod um, in the effort to expand the Diaconia program and to educate about it to other areas. Um, so I spent a lot of time in the back of Connie and Scott car as we were driving across the Senate. But they're going to share a little bit with you about their experience with the Acnea. Connie and Scott? Well, it's a pleasure to be here. And um, I think as we look at uh, the Acnea program for Connie and I, um, I'll let you speak for yourself, but certainly uh, we, we, we kind of got started in this. We'd heard about it. Uh, we were interested in it. Uh, luckily, Pastor Adam uh, was talking about it quite frequently to us mm -hmm. and uh, telling us about what he thought of the program. 
And uh, that's how we really got involved, uh, thanks to Pastor Adam. But um, uh, I, I think the other thing was we wanted to, both of us were kind of, I was just newly retired or on the edge of retirement. And uh, we wanted something, uh, I've been wanting for a long time to understand a little bit more about the Lutheran faith, you know, and faith in general. And I think you felt the same way. And so we I kind did. of we, we kind of pulled each other, uh, you know, said, look, uh, we want to do this, so let's get going here. So we did. And uh, I think, I think uh, for Connie and I, it has enhanced uh, our understanding of the Bible, of theology, uh, especially related to being a Lutheran. But beyond that, probably... Um, uh, and, and using some aids uh, in, in learning, uh, you know, from other uh, denominations as well. So we've kind of expanded um, an understanding and acceptance, I think, of, uh, of other, uh, you know, more ecumenically of other uh, faiths as well. Do you agree? And I think, you know, at the beginning, I was a very afraid of any kind of classroom <laughs> situation. You know, I've been out of the classroom for, what, 40 years. And... Uh, some of the homework at first was overwhelming to me as an introvert, so uh, I know that Pastor Sarah really um, tried to get me out of my shell a little bit, but that it was a great program, and doing it together, we could, you know, work on our homework together and then kind of feed it off of each other, and if we had to do a sermon as Pastor Sarah had us do as a mini sermon, um, you know, it was it was better to work with someone that we could kind of bounce it off each other. And that was helpful as a couple, we would talk going to class and coming home and the next day and throughout the week before class again. So, you know, the couple situation was really good for us. And I think that carried over as well because in the mornings, Connie and I can sit here at the breakfast table and uh, she does her devotions and what she's reading for the day. We spend maybe a couple of hours uh, in the morning, I'm reading my, um, you know, while I'm reading for the day. And then when something pops up, we think it's uh, interesting or has some meaning, then we, we can share that together now. And so we do that. And we're blessed, again, because we are uh, retired. And that gives us more time to be able to do this. But, you know, along with this diaconia, there, there comes a, you know, you're exposed to so much more. Um, and so you can go a little deeper than you had in the past, a better understanding of what uh, the worship service really means, um, you know, a deeper understanding from an educational process. But by the same token, I have to tell you, the more I learned, the more I knew I did not know. <laughs> and so I think that's kind of the continuation. Uh, we carry that forward, uh, not knowing and I think hungering. I think that's what we all do. We all kind of hunger, you know, we hunger for the Word of God. Uh, we want to be um, educated in that process, and by the same token, I think we have a deeper understanding, a deeper faith, I hope. Uh, we pray for that, and certainly a deeper, uh, uh, at least devotional experience every day. So. We Thank enjoyed you guys. it. <laughs> Welcome. Um, so previous uh, to this year, the Diaconia had, uh, program had been operating solely in the Southeastern Conference for the last four years. And we've been kind of praying that uh, it would grow and expand to new parts of the Synod. You know, I was dreaming about maybe one or, or two um, additional sites. And apparently the Holy Spirit had a whole different idea uh, in store for us because this year we opened the Diaconia program in uh, Toledo and Fremont and Findlay and Wapakoneta in addition to Waldo. Um, and that kind of growth is exciting enough to um, kind of deal with. And then a global pandemic happened, right? And, uh, and we all moved online and, and both um, instructors and teachers were negotiating this new medium um, that we were learning on. Um, but it's been a, a blessing and a, and a way to include uh, different students. Um, 
So our next student uh, may be familiar to you. Um, uh, Phil is from the Findlay uh, group. Uh, he is a member at Trinity Lutheran in Findlay. Um, there's some debate on whether he is currently retired as the treasurer of Northwestern Ohio or is currently the treasurer of Northwestern Ohio. So he's right in that sweet in between zone. Um, but he's gonna talk a little bit about, he's one of our first year students and is going to talk a little bit about his experience of Diakonia. Thanks okay. Phil. All right. Thanks, Sarah. Um, yeah, for the sake of time, I'm going to limit myself to just three benefits that I have gotten uh, from the Diakonia program. Uh, the first one is just a fellowship with people, other fellow disciples from throughout Northwest Ohio. So, I, you know, coming into the Synod, I really didn't have uh, an appreciation for what Synod was like. You know, it, it didn't feel like a, a group of churches, congregations coming together to serve the body of Christ. And so going through the diaconia and also serving as treasurer, I have a much better appreciation for what it means to be synod and to genuinely have fellowship with other members of uh, our group. We have a great camaraderie. It's been a lot of fun. I look forward to going to the classes and uh, uh, mixing with other people. I've learned you know, I have learned from my fellow students as much as I have learned from, uh, well, I better be careful with that one, but uh, <laughs> from the <laughs> pastors. But it's been a, a great experience to learn from each other. So that's one benefit. Uh, a second benefit, which, uh, um, you know, Connie and Scott talked about was basically, uh, I have learned to uh, what it means to be an ELCA Lutheran. And going into this, so I'm a, a, a Gideon as well, and many of you will know that Gideons tend to be rather on the uh, conservative Christian side. And so I have often wondered, hey, if I had a clean slate, uh, would I choose to be a ELCA Lutheran? And my background is I was raised as a Lutheran, and so uh, I sort of naturally gravitated into this. And so going into this class, uh, it gave me an opportunity to really explore uh, am, I, am I really an ELCA Lutheran? And, and I can tell you coming out of this, I am emphatically an ELCA Lutheran. I have really come to appreciate what it means to be an ELCA Lutheran. I have come to appreciate what it means to be far more accepting of other people's views. And, and it is a great blessing to be an ELCA Lutheran. And that came out of this uh, class as well. And then the, the third thing is a, uh, a better discernment of gifts I didn't know I had. And so, uh, and I'm still not sure I have them, to be honest. But uh, one of the things, and I think uh, I will get no arguments from anyone who knows me on this call, is I am not the most empathetic person in the world. So when it came to taking Pastor Will's class on Christian caring, uh, I was a little bit anxious about that because I wasn't sure what kind of role playing he would have us do. And so sure enough, uh, Pastor Will assigned each of us a person to call to comfort. And that's uh, not my strong suit by any stretch of the imagination. So I went into the call not exactly knowing what to expect. But at the end of the call, the person who I talked to said, Phil, I want to thank you. You have been a real blessing to me today. And, you know, here I was calling her to comfort her, and I felt blessed by her comment. And, and it made me think, you know, maybe there's something to this that, that I can, um, you know, reach out to people and just talking to them and listening to them, that I can be a blessing to them. And so, you know, I, after that, I, I actually called a friend I hadn't talked to for quite some time and just called him out of the blue. And uh, yeah, he said, at the end of our conversation, he said, Phil, I want to thank you. You've been a blessing to me today. And I said, oh, well, maybe this is a gift I had. I, <laughs> I, I'm still not convinced I'm there yet, but uh, it is something that I have come to appreciate. And I think diakonia, because it exposes you to so many different things that you may not be comfortable with, like Scott and Connie were talking about their sermons. Uh, and, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, I, I, it's just been wonderful to get that kind of experience and to discern gifts maybe I, I, uh, that are hidden within me that the spirit is revealing. So that's it. Thanks, Phil. Um, there was a, a, a study years ago that came out that said that um, camp counselors become parish pastors at a high rate. Um, any other, I, I was a camp counselor, any other camp counselors out there in the, in the crowds? 
um, I, I, I told my, I had a friend who sent this to me and she said, look, camp produces pastors. And I told her I was pretty skeptical um, that I thought maybe camp was just one of those places that prospective pastors go when they're trying to discern their call. And so I want to be real clear because um, uh, there's always some confusion around this, but Diakonia's uh, objective is to accompany, equip, and empower lay leaders to live out their baptismal call to be disciples of Christ. Um, it's, it's not the pathway towards SAM or team candidates. Uh, um, uh, its goal is to empower lay leadership in the congregation and in the parish. However, <laughs> it is an environment that will draw people who God is calling to pastoral ministry. And, and over the years, we've had students who, who came to us because they were in discernment. Our, our next uh, um, speaker is uh, Tansy Addison, and she is definitely one of those students. Um, we, I think for all of us who are her, were her instructors, it was very maybe clear to us before it was even clear to Tansy that she was um, in the midst of discernment when she came to us. Um, Tansy Addison is one of our, she was our first round when we were still as green as could be and didn't know what we were doing. She was with us um, in the Diaconia program uh, back when it was hosted in Galleon, Ohio. Um, she's the newly placed vicar at Good Hope Lutheran Church in Bucyrus, and she's enrolled as a team candidate. Thank you, Pastor Sarah, and uh, thank you for letting me share this great program with you. Uh, if you would have told me five years ago uh, I would be where I'm at today, I would have said, oh, no way. Uh, I had retired from teaching high school choir and band for 30 years uh, in 2011, and I was just really searching for different things to do. You know, during that time, being a high school band director, I mean, you never had any nights at home. And I was the, high, uh, the choir director at our church, very active in that. Um, and so uh, I searched a lot of different places and I happened to see just this blurb in our bulletin saying uh, they're starting this diaconia class. And uh, I didn't really do a lot of research, but I thought I need something. Um, and so it looked very structured uh, and I really like structure. And it looked like there was a plan and there was, uh, you know, a, a journey to go through you know the two-year thing really appealed to me i love i love school uh, obviously i was a teacher and that's what i loved about all of this is that it did have that direction uh, and i wasn't really looking forward to doing a lot of homework or anything like that uh, so i signed up i missed the spaghetti supper intro so i i just uh, go in cold for that first uh meeting and it was eye-opening, a lot of different people that I would not have ever thought I would be in a classroom with. Uh, and if it hadn't been for this one lady from our church that needed a ride, I might have just said, oh, I don't know if this is for me or not. Uh, but I was so thankful for that. Uh, so the next week I had to pick her up. We had homework and uh, it was an hour drive from my home to get to Galleon. I would pick her up in Marion and we would have a half an hour to discuss what we thought we would learn. And then a half hour home together to decide we didn't understand what we learned. Uh, so here's some questions or, uh, you know, what did you think about all of that? It was, that was as much learning as in the class. Uh, the three hours went quickly. And uh, each of my instructors, instructors were different. And I love that because they all come from a different perspective of uh, how you learn. The discussions were great. Uh, and I, I love the discussions where we didn't agree because uh, as Pastor Adam Sorensch, I always said, it's, isn't that heresy that you are called to find out what you do believe? Uh, it inspired me to think, wow, church could be more because, you know, I had really only been in my church for a while and I heard what all these other churches were doing. And I'm thinking, huh, oh, we could try that. And so uh, my choir people would tell you, I would uh, take my assignment for the week and uh, they were my guinea pigs. I would teach them and we would try all these different things. We, we have built uh, great bonds and fellowship during that. Uh, and we got to experiment, got to 
you know, just talk, laugh. Uh, and that was something new to me that, uh, you know, I'd done a lot of Bible studies and things like that. Uh, and I was scared that I wouldn't be smart enough to go through all of the Bible stuff. Uh, but that never uh, bothered me after, you know, you get there and you ask questions. They were always so helpful in leading you to that. And, uh, you know, I guess the one thing that I love more than anything, they would look at you and they'd say, hmm, I think you might have something that you could offer here. And so they would, you know, encourage you to go out of your comfort zone uh, and try some things. And, uh, you know, that's exactly what led me here. I, um, I got to experience being on the discipleship uh, team in the Synod. Uh, Diaconia led me to that. And then the team program came up and I thought, I can do this. Uh, every day I have to say, I can do this. <laughs> you know, it's still out of my comfort zone. But the great thing is, is that I know all these people that will help me. So I feel like, you know, I'm surrounded by people that want you to know the Lord better and um, let you dream. So, you know, I, and it doesn't lead to uh, where I'm at all the time. And sometimes that has really confused it. But everyone I know that has gone through diaconia has become better, you know, like the better disciple that God wanted you to be. So that's my experience. And I would say, oh, sign up <laughs> and, and take a friend. Definitely take a friend. Thanks, Tansy. Um, these are just a few of the students um, from Diaconia, but I suspect some of them uh, uh, you'd have to have a, you'd have to eat cookies with in a corner somewhere, but we, I'm sure that any student who participates in this program could talk about how this has, has shaped their lives in different ways and how it's bonded them to, uh, to um, other area churches and leaders um, and, and uh, surprising things that have grown out of it. Uh, years ago, this um, kind of initiative began as this crazy idea that we had in the Southeastern Conference. Um, uh, over the years now, it's expanded and it's um, operating uh, all over our synod. And, and we've really worked to try to make it available to everyone. Um, so in that regard, um, the Diaconia site is, is now being transferred over to the Synod site and we're in the process of getting that ready for you. You'll also be able to apply um, online through the Synod site and, and then all the payment and things will be done through the Synod. When all of that is up and running as we want it to, we'll send you out an email. I know your site coordinators are working real hard to look at this next year. Um, because of COVID, we're all on different schedules and we've had to adapt in new ways, but, um, but we're getting plans out for the next year. Um, we have, um, we've, during this time, we have uh, been able to jump online and what we've learned is it's a way uh, to make diaconia accessible to, to areas in the synod that otherwise would never be able uh, to participate where there's never going to be a site that's close enough. So even after um, COVID-19 is, is, is finished and we can return to in-person site, we're, we're going to make sure that we keep a hybrid model in several locations so that those students who could only participate because we were online would still be able to participate in the program and complete it. Um, I think that uh, Caroline um, can uh, lead us through some questions, but I just want to thank uh, all the instructors out there who have been so uh, faithful and adaptable in the midst of this time. You're the site coordinators, and then I know there's a lot of Diaconia students um, on today's uh, Zoom meeting too. So thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for trying Zoom, even though I know you longed to be with your fellow classmates. Um, in person. I think uh, your faithfulness in the midst of this time is amazing. And, and I do believe that in the midst of this time where we're worried about, there's so much to be discouraged about. Uh, if you can dive into learning and growing, um, it'll, it'll, be a, it'll be a nice, hopeful step in the midst of this time where we're experiencing so much transition. So I'd really encourage you um, to seek out uh, some of these great students who can tell you more about their experiences if you're, if you're interested or you know someone who you think would benefit from this program. Caroline? 
Yeah, so if um, you have questions, feel free to send them to um, the chat box or to our info box and we'll um, get those included in this. Um, the first one is um, what do you mentioned everything's online now. What do virtual courses look like? How is that relationship building? You know, it's going to be different than in person. So what does that relationship building look like online um, when we can't be together in person? Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, so I think that um, Chris Young's probably out there somewhere. Um, I, uh, her class, I was the tech person for, I got to sit in on the Findlay class. And if you um, ever want to know how you can do an interactive class over Zoom, talk to Chris Young. Um, because we did house blessings, uh, we did uh, worship services, we had conversations, we lit candles, um, we had small group conversations. Uh, so while nothing is as wonderful as sitting in person, um, there are a lot of things that we can do um, over this medium. And it invites us into each other's homes in new ways. I mean, I can't imagine how you would have done a house blessing if you were um, at a church, right? We could only do it to the school, but I have been in for that Findlay group. I've, I've seen all of your bathrooms and your garages and uh, because we have shared this, um, this new medium um, in order to teach. That's awesome. Um, what are some examples of kind of like life after diaconia? Um, do you have any stories of how people utilize this um, kind of education? Um, and we kind of heard, you know, Bible studies and deeper understanding of faith. And, you know, what are some other examples of um, things that people take with them? Do you, um, uh, Scott or Connie or Tansy, if you want to jump in on any of these, Phil, I know you're still in limbo with this, right? You're, you're, you still have some discernment time. I saw Scott and Connie are, are unmuted. Scott, you want to jump in? Sure. Um, for me, um, I, pastor has allowed me to be an assistant uh, minister in our service, which I, um, I really, um, it's such a fulfilling experience uh, for me. And I think the other thing is, we've talked about this, I've talked about this with Pastor Adam, is for me moving forward, I would like to um, uh, be in, involved in the Stevens ministry um, as we go forward and as COVID allows us to do that. But uh, along with another person in our congregation, I would like to uh, be a trainer in that process. So uh, the other thing is I'm an elder in the church and uh, I think it's just, uh, you know, again, it, it's allowed me to kind of expand myself. And, uh, I, you know, I'm hoping on an everyday basis uh, that I'm able to just uh, serve humanity better than I ever have in the past. How about you? <laughs> <laughs> I really don't know, uh, you know, with all this COVID going on, I'm kind of like been in limbo. Uh, I know that my prayer life has gotten so much better. Um, I, I'm anxious to get back in church. Uh, that's something that I really miss. So I'm kind of like in limbo right now, but I, I do a lot of, uh, I'm reading the Bible in a year right now, and I do daily devotionals. And I think my friends think that I have this huge, um, that I'm like better at prayer now that I've taken this class. I'm not sure that that I am, but I have a huge prayer list and every day people contact me, could you add this person? And so I really feel that my prayer life has been enhanced greatly. Um, this program has helped me with that. I think I was a little dormant before, so it has really been good for me. So I'm just waiting for all this COVID to be over and we'll see what's next. <laughs> I would have to say um, that uh, a lot of people that went through those classes with me have uh, really pursued what they were passionate for uh, in their church. Uh, you know, a lot of uh, music ministry uh, from Kevin Bell, I remember, and uh, a lot of prayer, uh, like what Connie was saying, is a really great uh, passion for so many people. And that is contagious when you see someone share that. Uh, I've seen it grow. 
Uh, then I see just people that are like uh, more confident to just say, um, let me be involved more in the Bible studies that you offer. Uh, Men in Mission, I've seen that grow in the people that I've known. Um, it is one of those things like uh, you see the Holy Spirit at work when you see these people that you know are in your class with you and they, they just start doing you know, what they've always wanted to do. They, they build confidence to do it. In, when I was in um, um, when I was in Waldo, um, I would have people from uh, from Diac Diaconia students congregations come up to me and say, "What did you do to them? They're different now." And so um, I think one of the things that um, that that um, that happens is that the, the Diaconia student um, grows deeper in their faith and whatever they're passionate about, like Tansy said, whatever, um, wherever their gifts are, they just dive deeper into them. And for all of our um, rostered ministers on this call, what are ways that um, people can identify or encourage people who um, might be interested or might be a, a, a good, might benefit from taking diaconia, what are some ways that um, we could encourage um, lay leaders to pursue further learning? I think we should have Connie. You want to take that one first, Connie? <laughs> I am not sure. Um, um, I'm, a I'm just confused. I'm teasing her because she was the one who we uh, Scott dives it when in everything head first, and Connie is the is the one who tests out the water. And, and as you can <laughs> see, I was like at a loss for words here. <laughs> I think that um, uh, personal invites are really helpful. Um, uh, there is no, um, you can try it. What's the hurt in trying something? Um, uh, um, that, I think that's really, diaconia students are often thirsty for deeper learning um, or hungry um, for more out of church. Um, they often are the ones who ask you the great questions. What would you guys add? Is there other things? I agree. I think, you know, I think pastor probably asked us about the agony maybe five or six times before we made a decision, but. Um, it's hard to say no to Thorn Chai, isn't it? It's it hard to really say no is. to Pastor Adam. <laughs> you just can't. And you know, I was really scared about the classroom environment and just meeting all the students and, and the people that were in class with us. You know, we've built great relationships with them. But I'll have to admit to you, going into the second year, because I am an introvert, so it was very hard for me, a lot of the speaking and the saints and getting up in front of everyone. And the second year I thought, maybe I won't go. Mm -hmm. So I said to Scott, I will go the first class and see where it goes from there. And, you know, I decided that first class, just being back with everyone. And I said, why would I even think about quitting this? And I'm so thankful that God didn't let me quit that because it, it was probably the greatest experience that I've had in a long time. It was a true blessing to continue that, and I was just so glad that I did. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I think if you just tell people that it is a, an experience, um, a deeper understanding perhaps, and I think, uh, as Phil said, it's the, it's the fellowship that will draw you back <laughs> time after time. They're going through the same kinds of things you're going through, and additionally, the different perspectives. It just, it's, it, carries over into other aspects of your life as well. Anything else, guys? I would say try it. And we won't financially punish you. We're not going to make you, if you come and you, and you don't like it and it's not the right time. We've actually had students that start 
started the program and then decided this wasn't the right season and actually have come back and re-enrolled in the program. So um, if this is not the season for it, we won't pun punish you for that. We won't penalize you for that. I would tell people, why don't you just give it a shot? And we do have a few questions asking about um, schedules and um, when they'll be established for new sessions. Um, so kind of when and where can people expect that information? Yeah, um, so all of your site coordinators, God bless your site coordinators, they're working on getting your um, schedules uh, lined up for the next year. Um, and then all of those will be posted on uh, on the Diaconia website, which will be on the Synod. Um, you'll see, when we go to that page, you'll see there'll be the different sites and then you can click it and there will be a schedule for the year. Now we all know that sometimes things adapt a little bit throughout the year in scheduling, but that'll be able to give you um, a basic idea of what the schedule is going to be for that year. And we'll get that out to you as, as soon as we can. Awesome. Well, those are all the questions we have for today. I don't know if we turn it over to Bishop or... I think it's the Bishop now. <laughs> oh, thank you so much for that wonderful presentation. Thank you, students, former students, and those who are currently attending, and also all those who are giving of their, of their time to, to teach. So I want to close with a prayer but want to have just a little moment of silence before I give a blessing. And during that time of silence, I would just ask that you seek the Lord's guidance for someone in your orbit, for someone in your parish, whom you believe God may be calling to this kind of learning. And so let's just take a moment of silence and then give, give that some consideration. Who may God, whom may God be putting on your heart? Let us pray. Receive now the blessing, and now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace and serve the poor. Thanks be to God. 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 Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for your witnesses, everyone. Thanks. 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 Wear a mask. Bye, everybody. Good to see you all. I see you, Jody Stewart. Hi, <laughs> Bishop. Hi there. Oh, you know? yeah, you want to. I see you there, Pastor Streetelmeyer. Good to Hello, see you. Bishop. Hello. Good. And Dean Reichert. <laughs> oh, sorry, Barb. All right. We need mask on. No. Okay. Unless, unless no. you're politically correct, it's going to be more politically correct for. Peace, <laughs> uh, all. Do you want to put them on? Well, let's.